I'm happy to be here on this occasion. The motion picture industry and the telecommunications industry have a long association. Both are based in science and technology. The motion picture industry has used technology to create an art form that entertains and affects the lives of millions of people. My industry uses science and technology to help people communicate, and we too affect the lives of millions. Both of our industries are in the communications business. So it is particularly satisfying when a development or discovery in my field may be used in yours as well. For instance, as I am talking to you, the machine is sampling my voice 30,000 times a second and storing an electronic description of it in its memory. The machine can do almost anything I want it to do. For example, it can make me sound like a group of chipmunks. Or it can make me sound like a group of giants. Or it can make me sound like a crowd of people speaking in unison. A general purpose computer controls this system, and I will occasionally have to type instructions into the machine during the course of the demonstration. The programs are loaded from these mass storage devices. While the computer reprograms itself, let me tell you about my work as a scientist at Bell Laboratories. As a scientist, my job is to conduct research that will improve telecommunications. Recently, I have been working on improving the quality of sound transmitted over Bell system lines and on new ways of connecting telephones quickly and more economically. In the course of this work, my colleagues and I at Bell Labs designed this electronics communications processor. It can analyze sounds put into it and manipulate these sounds, just as I've demonstrated with the previous program, which changed the pitch of my voice. What I have shown you so far is not the way Bell Laboratories is using this processor. We use it in the laboratory to process and model digital switching systems and to simulate potential problems in the quality of sound. Here is one of the ways that we use the machine in the laboratory. For example, I can use the machine to generate the dial tone. Or I can use it to generate the busy tone. Or audible ringback. As another example, I can use the machine to simulate the response of a 1919 telephone. This is the way my voice would sound if we were talking together over a 1919 telephone. This is an example of a telephone a few years later. Another way we can use the machine is to do research on digital touch tone receivers and transmitters. We've programmed the machine to synthesize the touch tones that people would normally use on their telephones to dial numbers. I will dial these numbers from the keyboard. The machine will receive these tones and process them digitally. It will then compose the instructions necessary to synthesize a human voice telling us which numbers have been dialed. For example, the number is two, three, four, five. Another example, the number is two, three, six, four. In the future, we expect that human beings and machines will be able to talk to each other over the telephone. For this reason, we also designed the processor with the capability to study the increasingly complex human-machine interactions in telecommunications. This processor is extraordinarily versatile. What this processor can do is limited only by the ingenuity of the person who programs its instructions. The fellow who programmed the processor and worked out the software is Bell Lab scientist Dr. Doug Baer. One of the greatest tests of machine-human interaction is to link a musician with a machine. That's because musicians, when performing, generate many more instructions than someone simply typing or talking. So Doug programmed the machine to recognize all the elements of music, and we added an organ keyboard with a hundred different positions on each key. The result is that a performer can do interesting things with a piece of music. A composer can hear all the parts of a composition while he watches the notes go by on the screen. 
He can stop the process at will and edit the notes, and, as a conductor, can integrate the sections of the orchestra merely by sitting at the keyboard. Here is Roger Powell, composer of Cosmic Furnace, and he will illustrate to you some of the things that the machine can do musically. Thank you. With a few simple adjustments, we can approach imitating the sounds of conventional instruments. For example, here's a member of the woodwind family you may be familiar with. Built into this keyboard is a position sensing device, which allows the processor to respond to the true touch dynamics of the performer. This means that the musician can impart musical inflections to the sounds that you might not expect to come out of a keyboard controlled instrument. We can try another family of instruments. Let's go to the brass family. Along with this capability, the processor can also become a kind of musical sketch pad for an arranger or composer. Without having to use a tape recorder, the musician can play a series of notes and store them within the machine's memory. He can then have them played back automatically and make tempo or voice changes. I'd like to show you how an arranger might go about using this feature. First, we'll store this sequence of notes. We can check them for accuracy. And add another part. We can then hear the two parts played back together in synchronization. And add a live part. Composer Laurie Spiegel has also been working with the music processor. And now I'd like to play some samples of the wide variety of musical textures that can be created using her program. These are just a few very preliminary examples of some of the musical possibilities to be had with the new Bell Systems communications processor. Hal? Thank you, Roger. Now the processor has something new stored in its memory, the composition Roger just played. So if he has second thoughts and wants to make any changes in his composition or performance, they can be introduced at his pleasure later this afternoon or later this week or any time. Incidentally, 
While the processor was synthesizing the music, it was carrying out 200 million arithmetic functions a second. It can remember and perform a Mozart symphony, or a couple of such machines together could perform Beethoven's Ninth. What use the entertainment industries makes of this new capability is best speculated upon by you. I can only suggest some of the possible applications. The simulation of the acoustics of a theater or concert hall before building it. The creation of new sound effects. The composing of music with a wide range of capabilities. The arrangement and orchestration of music. The creation of new voices. The list is endless. My role, which is a happy one, has been to bring the processor to your attention. I hope it will be beneficial to this industry, as I'm sure it will be in telecommunications. And bringing so much pleasure to the public as did the jazz singer's synchronized sound system. Now, regarding the digital communications processor, I'd like to borrow Al Jolson's words and say, you ain't heard nothing yet.